just wanted to go over a couple of questions from um, 6.2 and 6.3 uh, regarding systems of linear inequalities. We will begin with number 2a from section 6.2, where we are to graph each sum of linear inequalities and justify your representation of the solution set. So as we mentioned in class, the first thing that you need to do is to think about the associated equation of each of the linear inequalities. So in this case, we have x plus 2y equals 4. And as you can see um, here, the easiest way to graph this line is to find the two intercepts, um, x and y. So I'm going to let x equal 0. In that case, 2y is equal to 4 and y is equal to 2. So that will give me the point 0, 2. And then I'll let y equal 0. So I get x equals 4. And that will give me the point 4, 0. Okay. So I can go ahead and graph those two points on my, line, uh, on my graph here. In this case, notice that it will be a solid line. So I'll go ahead and do just that. For the second line, um, x equals y, this is some similar to one of the example questions in our class. Uh, so you would note that the y-intercept for this line is going to be 0 and that it has slope of 1. So we're going to begin with the y-intercept 0, 0, and the slope of 1, 1 means we move up one space, move to the right one space, and once again, this will also be a solid line. So go ahead and draw that line through the two points there. And finally, last part, you are to test points um, to determine which side of the line you're supposed to shade and which side is your solution. Whenever you can, you should test 0, 0. So in this case, I have 0 plus 2 times 0 being greater than or equal to 4. 0 is greater than or equal to 4, which is false. So for the red line, I'm going to shade the side that 0, 0 is not on. So therefore, I'll shade above the line. And for the second line here, I cannot test the point 0, 0 because it is on the line itself. I'm going to test the point 1, 0 instead. And I'll get that 0 is greater than or equal to 1, which is also false. So I'll shade the line that the side of the line that it is not on. So it'll be this way. So you're to shade in this area here because it satisfies both inequalities and is uh, supposed to be shaded in because your domain and range are both all real numbers instead of integers or whole numbers or natural numbers. So you can go ahead and color that in. For the second part, you have to justify your representation of the solution set. So you can pick a point in your solution set. In this case, I'm going to choose the point 2, 4. And I'll show that it satisfies both inequalities. The first one, 2 plus 2 times uh, 2, 3 greater than or equal to 4. So I'll get 6 is greater than or equal to 4, which is true. And then for the second inequality, 4 is greater than or equal to 2, and that's also true. So that's a justification of our representation of the solution set. We will continue with an example from section 6.3, uh, number 4C. Uh, the reason why I chose this example is because of the domain and range that it has. 
So this is one of the things that we did not mention in class, but you have seen uh, prior to this course, and that is how n represents natural numbers. So natural numbers are similar to whole numbers both about the zero. So these are the numbers that go 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. And certainly that will have implications for us when we find out what our solution set is. But to begin the question, we're going to do something that's similar to what we've done before. And that is we're going to work with the associated equation first. And in this case, we have 3y minus 2x equals 6. And notice that for this question, they have set us up with very nice numbers because 6 is divisible by both 2 and 3, and that's true for both the first inequality as well as the second one. So we can simply let x equal 0 and be left with 3y equals 6. So I have y equals 2. That gives me the first point, 0, 2. Similarly, if I let y equals 0, I'll get negative 2x equals 6, so x will be equal to negative 3, and I'll get negative 3, 0 as my second point. On to the second inequality, 2y minus 3x equals 6. Again, I let x equal 0. So 2y is equal 6, and y will be equal to 3. That will give me the point 0, 3. And then I can let y equal 0. So negative 3x is equal to 6, and x is going to be equal to negative 2. And I will get the point negative 2, 0. Okay, so for each of the inequalities, there are supposed to be solid lines, which is very good. Because that's a little bit easier to draw. 0, 2, negative 3, 0. And I'm going to go ahead and draw this line. There we are. I'll also draw the second line of 0, 3 and negative 2, 0. There we are. And now our test points for both of these. Now, fortunately for us, neither of these lines crosses 0, 0, so I'm going to test 0, 0 for both of these lines. I'll get 3 times 0 minus 2 times 0 being less than or equal to 6. And we know that 0 is less than or equal to 6, so that is true. I'll shade below the red line, and then I'll do something similar for a second inequality. So 2 times 0 minus 3 times 0, and that is also less than or equal to 6. 0 is less than or equal to 6. So that's also true. I'll shade below this line as well. So first we're going to go ahead and shade in the solution set. And then you will notice that the domain and range are both natural numbers, so we're supposed to dot in our solution. We cannot include anything that has to do with x equals 0 or y equals 0, because those are not natural numbers. So if you take that into consideration, your solution set will be closer to something like this. And finally, the last part of the question requires us to determine a solution for each uh, system of linear inequality. So let's just pick one of the points here. In this case, I'm going to pick 3, 1. 
and some quick algebraic work will show you that the 3, 0.31 satisfies both inequalities. For our third example, we have a word problem. If you read through the question, you will see that um, Trish wanted no more than 500 friends and, and at least three school friends for every rugby friend. So those are the key points. To start us off, we have to set up the variables. We have two types of friends. Let x equals school friends. And y be rugby friends. Okay. Now we're going to define our inequalities first. So notice that she wants no more than 500 friends, so therefore x plus y is going to be less than or equal to 500. And she wants at least three school friends for every one rugby friend. So, she wants more school friends than three times her rugby friends. Next up, we do want to set up our domain and range restrictions. And in this case, we will have whole numbers. And the reason that is is because once again we cannot have negative number of friends or have a fractional number of friends okay so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and graph these inequalities just like we've done for the uh, generic problems and what we want to do here first of all is to work with the associated equation, so f x plus y equals 500, let x equals 0, y will be equal to 500, that gives us the point 0, 500. Similarly, if I let y equal 0, x is going to be equal to 500, and that will give me the point 500 and 0. I can go ahead and graph that line, 500 and 500. It will be a solid line because the inequality suggests that it should be less than or equal to 500. So there we have it. For the second inequality, again, the associated equation is going to be x equals 3y. I'll rewrite this in slope-intercept form. That will be y is equal to one third x. In this case, the y intercept is going to be zero, and the slope will be one third. Okay, I'm going to start with my y intercept of zero. Slope is once again rise over run, so if I rise 100 spaces, I'll have to run 300 spaces. And once again, I'll draw a solid line for this one as well, because it says at least. And there we have it. So now I'm going to test points for each inequality to see where the solution set actually is. I'll test 0, 0 for the first inequality. 0 plus 0 is less than or equal to 500. Well, 0 is less than or equal to 500, so that's true. And for the second inequality, you cannot test a 0, 0, so I'm going to go ahead and test the point 200 and 0. So if I went ahead and did that, I'll get 200 is greater than or equal to 3 times 0, and 200 is in fact greater than or equal to 0, so that's true. That means that for the first line, I'm going to shade below. And for the second line, since 200, 0 is in that location, I'm going to shade below this line as well. So now I'll shade in the solution set.
there it is but you should dot in this region because once again we do have whole number solutions so it's gonna go ahead and do that but you realize that there are also solution in between the dots because there can be whole numbers there as well so when the question asks uh, determine two possible combination of school friends and rugby friends that she could have you can actually go with any whole numbers that will be inside of this region so for example I can have solutions such as 450 and 30 that's a point that's inside of this region and both of these numbers are whole numbers and you can see that it satisfied both uh, conditions the first being that there is less than 500 friends And the second is that there's at least three school friends per rugby friend. Another solution could be something like 390. And you can see that it satisfies both of the conditions because 390 friends is less than 500 friends. And you have at least three school friends per rugby friend.